But I say, I know I I know I see that. Wow. I remember everything. I love sticks. I love it. 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 I <laughs> I'm sorry about it. Well, I don't think it's uh, so the first time in 13 years I get to say it again. And no, without that, they can bring this plan on the Good morning. Good morning. And welcome for Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday in Advent. Please join me in the collect of welcoming. Holy Spirit, living, living within us, send to St. Peter's all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives. Prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcome in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with us. Spirit. Let us pray. Stir up thy power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are solely hindered by our sins, let thy bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Mm -hmm. 
Reading from the book of Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me, he has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what it is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this Sunday is Psalm 126. We will read it together responsibly by verse, by half verse. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are happy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears. Will reap the songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carry the seed. Will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, 
I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. That's the uh, theme, the base for today's journey of liturgical wonder. We are in the midst of Advent. We light the pink candle, we put on the pink vestments, um, and we do our best to rejoice, which seems like we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because isn't Christmas the time to be having a party, you know, the birthday cake and all that? No, actually, there are two Sundays in these rather austere times right before the great feasts of the church, right before Holy Week and Easter, right before Christmas, where we pause in our journey and give thanks and lift up our hearts and sing a glad song. And this is one of those. One of the things that is difficult about this year is that fourth Advent, the last Sunday of Advent, kind of gets lost in the midst of Christmas Eve. So we have to remember to kind of hold it and a great way to hold that is to remember that this Sunday, Gaudete Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, this is our placeholder. We have one more candle to light, one more week to make a transit of before we're ready for the festival of the birth of our Lord. So let's together hold that tension in this moment. But take a breath. Relax your shoulders. Shake it out. We've, we've done a good job so far. We can take a little break. And in the midst of that break a figure arrives, John the Baptist. I, I, I really had an epiphany this year, as we're getting ready for Christmas, irony taken, that we are being given a glimpse of John the Baptist in a really profound and unique way in the Gospel of John. Who are you? Who are you? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? These are the, these are the interrogations that the religious authorities are pushing onto John the Baptist as he's engaged in the activity that we recognize as the forerunner's right of proclaiming the arrival of the Messiah. He's the herald of the Son of God. We know that. They don't. They just see a wild figure, someone who seems like they just stepped out of the past, out of the days of Israel when the voice of the prophets would echo across the mountainsides through the halls of authority and power and the courts of the temple, down the streets of the holy city. The prophets would erupt in poetry and cry out and call Israel and Judah to account and to call them back to a more faithful position and practice in the presence of God. He is someone whom people recognize, not so much for what he is doing in the present, but for what he is provoking and their images of the past. And so they expect him to conform to that. And yet, and yet, he won't accept their projections. Who are you? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? And he responds with a line from Isaiah. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is not far off, but near. The way of the Lord is not something that is abstract, but, com but completely relevant to the very present moment, both then and now. Make straight a way in the wild places. Make it level and clear. Prepare to receive the Messiah. That is what he is about. Then why are you behaving this way? 
Why are you baptizing? Why are you proclaiming to these people repentance? Who gives you this authority? And he responds again by pointing back to the Christ who is to come. I prepare the way for the one who is coming. I am not worthy even to untie the thong of his sandal. I baptize with water, but he will baptize with spirit. In the Gospel of John, unlike the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus is already the Christ. Jesus is one who has been with God and is from God and is of God from the very beginning of creation itself. It's just up to us now to recognize the Christ in our presence. And perhaps this gospel and this Sunday is the most profound and relevant to us because oftentimes we can get ourselves caught up, if you will, in the liturgical and pastoral reruns of the story. We somehow think that when it comes to Christmas, we're waiting for the baby Jesus to arrive when in fact he already has. We're waiting for the Christ around us to arrive and Christ has already come and is in our midst and is with us and provokes us to love and care for our neighbors, provokes us to open our hearts and our beings to a God who cries for the consolation of the poor, the liberation of the captive, and calls for justice to rain down like many waters. We are called, like John the Baptist, to be agents who point to the one who is not only to come, but who is already here in our midst, provoking us to love profoundly, serve with graciousness, and care mightily for all those around us who are in the profound need of a note, a song of good news. So today we rejoice and we are glad in the presence of the one who is and who was and who is to come. We give thanks for the grace and wonder of having Christ in our midst. And we look with expectancy to the arrival of Christ among us. The joy we will have as we welcome all home to this moment with grace and joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth made glad with laughter and song. And we raised ourselves up with shouts of joy. Amen. My siblings in Christ, let us stand and affirm our faith with the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son of God, God eternally God, begotten of the Father, God, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God, God from true God, God begotten God, not made. Of one, one being with the Father, Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world's come. Amen.
with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, in the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Reverends Canon Valerie L. Balling, Mart Martin Brown, Nicholas Chase Danford, Kristen Foley, Frederick Galano, Rosemary H. Lillis, Robert A. Nagy, Canon Dr. Martin U.N. Oguik, Fernando Pava III, Canon Ronald N. Pollock, C. Scott Troll, James C. Walworth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Bishop Sally, for Marshall, our rector, Elizabeth, our associate rector, and Eva, our seminarian, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this borough of Spotswood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those serving in the military, especially Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those marking birthdays, especially Larry, Steve, Shaylin, Jean, and McKenna, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Rick, Chris, and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Kay, Sonny, Betty, Pat, Piper, Ayla, William, Phil, Gail, the O'Donnell family, Peter, Ethel, Aiden, Eddie and Nancy, Cindy, Jeffrey, Christopher, Felipe, Diane, Florence, Oscar, Joseph, Patrick, Ernie, Keith, John, Janet, Paul, Doreen, Judy, Donna and family, Jason and Braden, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Peter and our patron, and of all saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. O heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, we may live to serve thee with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorrow for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burdens of them tolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to that end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Good morning. Buenos dias. Bienvenidos a San Pedro. Welcome home to St. Peter's. Good to have you here. Um, after this service, uh, Laura and I are hosting coffee hours, so please do join us over in the parish hall. We are also, just a little something, also um, we are happy to welcome Christina Maffa Johnson, who is the uh, co-leader of our Sunday school. She's going to be offering a rector's forum today on joy. So please do join us for that. We hope you can linger uh, and, and have that experience. Um, please be aware that Christmas flower donations are accepted until tomorrow. So there are uh, memorial offering envelopes for flowers at the back and at the side here. If you wish to make a donation, um, you can do that directly today as well. You can also call Chris tomorrow and uh, give your uh, memorial donations, and you can also do that online. So either way, we'll get, we just need to get that covered so we can get the Christmas bulletin printed. Because as I said in my sermon, Advent 4 comes you eat lunch and suddenly it's Christmas Eve. That's all next Sunday. So we've got a lot to accomplish in a very short period of time and your support is very much appreciated. The office will be closed during Christmas week. That is the week following Christmas. So Christmas day through till Thursday will be closed, but we're still available if there's a pastoral emergency or something like that, just give us a ring. Um, I will be responding by phone. So, um, but just be aware that um, we're trying to lighten the load a little bit at the end of the year. We appreciate that support. 
Stewardship continues, doesn't end. It's 365 days a year. So if you haven't yet made your commitment of giving for 2024, please do so. You can do that online um, through Realm, or you can also do that. I believe there are a few envelopes and uh, giving intentions back there. Back there as well is the jar for the Rector's Discretionary Fund. This is the uh, one of the last weeks in the year to participate in uh, Change for Change. Uh, the investor designated that. There'll be a new one designated in January, but I just wanted to draw your attention to that. Um, we appreciate your support in that regard. The fund is inching its way up again. Okay, if you wanna take out your pen or pencil, or if you just wanna remember to check the website, here is the schedule for Christmas. Advent 4 will be at 9 a.m. on the 24th. That is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Then after lunch, it will be Christmas Eve. We will meet here for liturgy at 5 p.m. There's one service at 5 p.m. for Christmas Eve. Christmas Day, 10 a.m. And then New Year's Eve, which is the following Sunday, there will be a service at 9 a.m. of Christmas Lessons and Carols with Eucharist. And I appreciate you memorizing all of those. Should we have a quiz? You got it? Good. Okay. I know it's it's a very tight schedule. And the reason for that is that out of once, every, I think it's once every 12 years or something like that, we wind up with Christmas Eve on a Sunday. We want to make sure we complete the journey of Advent and we can celebrate Christmas together heartily. That's why you'll see that Christmas has already kind of made its way into the nave of the church and it's slowly making its way up. We have the creche up and ready. The Sunday school is gonna be decorating that at the 10 a.m. service. Um, so again, we're kind of working our way up towards the altar for Christmas. Alice's cup and Kelly's cupboard, I want to extend to you all a hearty thank you from the Community Foot Ministries Board. We met this last Wednesday and um, Rich, who is our main sort of quartermaster of the pantries, has said that we have really been very much benefiting through your generosity. The gifts of particularly non-perishable meat sources of canned meat, legumes and beans and such, these are essential this time of year and they're very much welcome. If you have a ham or a turkey you'd like to donate as well, feel free to do so. You can drop those directly off at Alice's Cup up the street or you can bring them during uh, Kelly's Cupboard when we're serving the supper. Either way, it's great. We really appreciate that. Reverend Liz, you got anything? So um, before the Christmas merriment um, next Sunday into Monday, um, on Thursday evening, we will be gathering for our blue Christmas service. So this is a service for grief, for remembrance, and a service of light. So um, all are welcome. And uh, we'll be lighting luminaries from the gate to the sanctuary starting at 630 and then the service will begin at seven. So see me if you have any questions, but just know that you're welcome to come and rest and hold that space when sometimes holiday parties are not your vibe. And that is, that's why we're holding this. So blessing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, those of you who have grown uh, an affection for Ava, she is heading off for family time. Her semester is completed, um, so she's with us on Sunday, but she's uh, heading out and uh, will be back for New Year's. But I just want to say thank you, Ava, and a Merry Christmas to you, and safe travel for everyone who is going on holiday. I want to thank Reverend Liz and Ava for a wonderful quiet day yesterday. We uh, did some time together, um, really taking sort of a quiet moment out of Advent to explore scripture, to engage in what's called kinesthetic prayer, using um, actually some um, some yarn to uh, to hand loom um, some, uh, some uh, chains so that we can be present in prayer, and then as well to perform an Ignatian examine, a deep meditation and reflection on the year. So thank you both for that hard work. We appreciate your presence in that and all who participated. I also wanna give an incredible pat on the back and a shout out to our shop volunteers. They have one more week of being open, but they have done an amazing job this year. Can we give them a round of applause because they have done so much for us. All right. Well, as we move forward into Eucharist, know that all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of St. Peter's or an Episcopalian to participate, but know that we are most happy to welcome you home to St. Peter's. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
And a thank you as well to our bread baking crew for providing us with communion bread again for the celebration of the Eucharist. So we have fresh bread today. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of Amen. thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right. It is very meet, right, and our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we, for, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, oh, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God, power, and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Toda la gloria se para ti, oh Señor nuestro Dios, porque tú creaste el cielo y la tierra, y nos hiciste a tu imagen y de tu tierna misericordia. Has dado a tu único Hijo Jesucristo para que tome nuestra naturaleza sobre, sobre él y para que sufra la muerte en la cruz por nuestra redención. Hizo allí un sacrificio completo y perfecto por el mundo entero e instituyó y en su santo evangélico nos mandó continuar un recuerdo perpetuo de su precioso, preciosa muerte y sacrificio hasta su venida de nuevo. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Por tanto, el Señor, 
y Padre Celestial, nosotros, tu pueblo, celebramos y hacemos con estos tus santos dones que ahora te ofrecemos el memorial que tu Hijo nos ha mandado hacer, teniendo en memoria su bendita pasión y preciosa muerte, su ponderosa resurrección y gloriosa ascensión y buscando su venida de nuevo por poder y gran gloria. Y humildemente te suplicamos, oh Padre misericordioso, que nos escuches y con tu palabra y Espíritu Santo bendigas y santifiques estos dones de pan y vino para que sean para nosotros el cuerpo y la sangre de tu amado Hijo Jesucristo. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant we beseech thee that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us in our, the language of our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Grant us our peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. May our gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in us and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for thou dost feed us with this holy mysteries, the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And also share us thereby favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. Seek thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all born and glory, world without end. Amen. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? No, not today. Oh, wonderful. If you join me for the prayer with the prayer for birthdays. Watch over thy son, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in her heart, may thy peace which passeth understanding abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's your birthday too? Que el sol de la justicia brille sobre ustedes y disipe las 
tiene blas a su paso. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, se con ustedes y permanencia siempre con ustedes. Amen. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hark the Glad Sound, the Savior Comes, hymn number 72. Oh, Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Um. That was something.